same zone. They have not moved anywhere. This is a great showing of patience, but also a very big lack of versatility here. Yeah, there's 48 seconds left on the clock. They're going to start to have to get a wriggle on. It's just can they execute once again from this spot? They're going to have to to make this work. If they do, they're in a lot of trouble. Mungo, great firing here. Pex trades well. He gets the jump. Yeah, it wasn't a great grenade coming out from that XL5 player, but that was a great shot. We played another one. Hey guys, and welcome back to the ESL AU and NZ Championship presented by St. George. We're back here with our final match of the week. It's going to be, of course, Immunity and Legacy facing off on their second map, Train Carath. How do you feel about this one? It is Legacy's pick, but their performance there on Overpass wasn't the best. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, momentum firmly in Team Immunity's favor. Look, it's going to be a hard ask for Legacy to even I guess, make the draw of victory at this time, in all honesty, unless they have some great T-size strategies that we don't know about, but I'm not sure because I haven't seen many of Legacy's recent games, so... Right, yeah, and I mean, uh, if anything to go by on Overpass, it's not going to look too good here for those guys, but it is their map pick, so you'd hope that at least they have something left in the bank here. Obviously, Legacy, or Immunity rather, in this case, banned out Cache which resulted in Legacy picking up uh, that map of Train there, as you can see on your screen. And yeah, hoping for Legacy to maybe bring something back here on Train. We did just see a pretty fantastic matchup between uh, Atletico and Chiefs on Train, which ended up in 15-15. So if I had to uh, ask for a another map like that, I would definitely do it. But I don't know if we're going to get there, to be honest. I don't know if Legacy has it in them to get to that point. And uh, well, moving over to Train, would you say Legacy... Are going to be able to get more than 10 rounds, less than 10 rounds? Let's have a prediction. Oh, if they start T-side, I reckon it will be a 16-6 victory towards IM. Okay. Um, if they start CT-side, I'd love to say 15 all, but I mean, it's just hard to... <laughs> I want my prediction to be correct, but it's just hard yeah. to actually just justify it. I would say that if, even if they start CT-side, IM should come out the victory about 16-11, 16-12. But yeah. once again... I mean, just critical rounds where the economy matters so much. Is that's what's going to boil down towards at the end of the day. Exactly. Got to got to go with your head sometimes, as opposed to your heart in these predictions sort of a situations. If I had to give a prediction, I'd say it's going to be reasonably similar to what you've predicted there. I've already predicted immunity with a 2-0, so I can't really change my colours at this point, can I? Hopefully, at least for me, immunity will be able to pick this one up. But we'll be underway very shortly. Legacy definitely hoping to get some points on the board. Have yet to actually pick up a victory in our Season 2 of the AU and NZ Championships. So, uh, an important game coming out here for Legacy. Very similar to the situation that Chiefs found themselves in on train. Down 0-3 and, three and uh, hoping to get back that first map win. But Immunity, only 1-1 one and one as well. Or uh, now 2-1. and one. Uh, Definitely not ready to give up any free points. Yeah, absolutely. They need to take any chance they can. I mean, we already see, I think, teams already on 4 and 0. So exactly. Parallax. I mean, some good work. Yeah, I mean, if you want to secure, I believe it's the four spots towards the final land finals, isn't it? Yeah. So every single map counts, and Immunity going to be starting that CT side with pistols. Legacy Esports going to be scattering all across the map on their T side. Yeah, Legacy starting off on T side doesn't bode well, according to your prediction here, and certainly doesn't bode well in this pistol round. Gratisfaction and James starting off very well again for Immunity, and we saw the CT pistol very heavily go in the favour of Immunity on Overpass. Seems like it might be heading in that direction again here, but Legacy do manage to chime a couple back. We're back to a three versus three here. Yeah, it's still tight. I mean, Gratisfaction was unable to get that exit kills out of Vine and Destiny. Can we flash a little bit? Gratisfaction throws. Going to pick up Gots. Destiny coming across. I thought he got the kill, but Burn comes out of CT Con. Goes, you know what? I want a couple of frags now. He's going to pick up two pistol headshots. Team Immunity once again winning the pistol round. They have a crucial pistol round. Legacy forced onto the eco. Immunity haven't lost a pistol round so far in this matchup. So, you know, even without really starting the battle, they get themselves an early advantage. You would think nine rounds overall are going to be going into their back pocket. But Legacy will be doing their best to deny that. Yeah, and they have bought armor and pistol into this round. But once again, just scattering out a little bit. Looks like it's going to be an A-site execute, but it's going to be a little bit delayed. Three outside of T-Con, two 
Just looking like it is playing B-Hole, seeing if any of Team Immunity want to push it. Look at this, Destiny is going to be pushing in towards SL at the moment, but I don't think he'll be able to find anything. Dev K is waiting at the moment with a Tech 9 bomb, slowly making his way towards B-Side as well. Almost wouldn't have been surprised to see him push up the, the ladder there, but might have been a little bit too aggressive if he had have opted to go for that. And now just falling back onto the A-Site, going to hold the main angle. Needs to be careful that someone doesn't come down the Pop Dog and get him from behind, but at the moment, should be having too many difficulties in that department. Seems like Legacy, well, he initially looked like they were going to head towards B, but now coming back over to the A-Site. So a little undecided for Legacy. Still have a couple of smoke grenades to work with here as well, and the Execute will have to come out relatively shortly. Time ticking away. Yeah, and look, if Legacy are able to get the first couple of opening picks, I mean, look how close Destiny is playing. A good Tech 9 headshot instantly means that they don't have any long-range utility to use. Gratifaction has that scout, but that's it. They only have SMGs on the side of Team Immunity, so Destiny has to play as cautiously. Look at this, he's going to push up SL, he's going to spot Whoa. two terrorists, and he's going to try and fly out of there. Jester is going to be completely blind, but Gotzloff is going to find the first seal. Gaz and Gratis Faction, though, answering a return. James going huge with a UMP, a triple kill. That's uh, actually a pretty good play in the end there from Destiny because he gets up there, he gets the information, and as a result, Immunity just able to rotate a second or two quicker over to that A-bomb site. They only lose Destiny in the end there, so a very good round coming out from the CTs here. And Legacy, once again, struggling. They wanted to pick up that Force Buy and start things on the right foot, but unfortunately for them, not the case here on Train. Again, similar to Overpass. Yeah, and if they want to buy the AWP, just has to go in their armor. There's no one that's richer enough to do so. Looks like they're going towards B as of this moment. Just all Glocks and a couple of P250s. Destiny going to be spotting that. Oh, that nade looks like it's going to do a chunk of damage. Oh, and does. white. A good Molotov coming out there as well from James. Gets himself actually two kills. Actually, double nade. I think it was from Destiny and Burn in the end, not James. But regardless, the Molotov did some work. And three on the board now for Immunity. Yeah, I mean, Legacy now have to buy all AKs now. So Jester's not going to opt for that AWP. Just AK and armor. Good, good set of utility, though, coming across the board, though. Have a lot of smoke grenades yeah. to work with. What single Molotov so far. So I would like to see it a couple more mol Molotovs instead of flashbangs. But I guess at this stage, our economy just couldn't afford it. And we just see a bunch of smokes coming across what seems to be on towards that A bomb yard. Mol Counter Molotovs being thrown out as well. So it looks like it's going to be A side execute. Yeah, Legacy moving very quickly into that A bomb site. Destiny with a job to do. Doesn't do it very well. Gets taken down by Mato. Did get a bit of damage across. Mato down to 12 HP, but certainly the one for zero is something that Legacy will be very happy to take, and they'll get the bomb down safely as well. So, Legacy very much in control of this round now, and Team Immunity forced on the retake. Gaza moving forward, hasn't spotted any anyone out just yet. There's a player lurking up in towards heaven there. It's Dev K. Jester here as well, watching that smoke at the moment. Immunity really not having the greatest of times on this retake. Eventually, Dev K picks up the first kill there. James gets one, but Dev K doing a great amount of work from up there. Gratis Faction does trade him out in the end, but perhaps too little too late here. Immunity now relying on those two members and not much time to work with. Yeah, and they're just going to go save. Gratis Faction can't get those peaks in time. It's an open bomb plant. T's not going to go for the peak either. They need to save as many AKs as they can. Good, just... Just a quick a site execute, standard stuff. It worked in their favor. Our team immunity now have to be sitting up with notice and going, okay, we can't leave that mid position just easily defend the destiny. I mean, mm. I would say Mr. Siddle once again, and that really yeah. just opened up the a site. Oh, well, immunity will have another opportunity into this round. Gaza going to be gifted a P90 one of, uh, by one of his friends. Burn and James dropping for their teammates. Still uh, not a terrible buy coming out in the end for immunity. Gaza left with not a huge amount of utilities, but certainly a serviceable, serviceable buy. And the pressure not yet lifted on Legacy, but this could be the round. If they pick this one up, should be able to pick up the following one. Mato gets tagged, and for some reason, White decides to charge right out onto the A-bomb site on his own. Destiny says thank you very much. Picks up the early kill for Immunity. Yeah, and a much better early hold coming out from Immunity. And we see instantly they actually put those three numbers very, very aggressively towards that middle part just to stop any thought of Legacy actually coming out mid ever again. And look at this Destiny. I'm not sure if he made a little bit of ladder noise, but he's directly behind all the T's in that B holes. Hasn't made any noise, it seems, or at least Legacy hasn't heard it, and he will be able to find one kill there onto Jester. Burn doing a good job as well on that B bomb side, and another shutout coming out from Immunity. So, Legacy, the economy has been reset. They won't really be able to buy into this one. Immunity very much seem like they're going the same way as that first map. Yeah, and Legacy, I mean, as soon as that mid-train yard take was just shut down, I mean, 
That's to think a couple of more things. I mean, that B just seems to be not working for them. A is not working for them. So they just have to slow down now and just go, you know what? We have to just just buy time so we can get a couple of picks and just do damage to the counter-terrorist economy. They know Team Immunity's economy is not at the best state at the moment. So if yep. they can, you know, just get Destiny playing a little bit too aggressively, Gazza playing a little bit too aggressively, get a couple of good P250 picks. All of a sudden, even though they can't win the round, Team Immunity are lacking a couple of guns. And that's when they strike with the AKs. Yeah, I agree. That's actually something that Legacy could try to utilize here because we have seen Destiny push forward a lot both on overpass and now starting to do it here on train as well. So Legacy, if they do slow down their play, maybe just play sort of default and maybe wait for Destiny to push into them. There's opportunities that they can use to get the pick. And once again, Destiny trying to push into A main there gets picked up by Mardo. No gun retrieved here by Legacy, but they might be able to pick it up on their way out to A. Still a good result regardless, even if they can't pick up that gun. You always take a free kill on your on your eco round. Absolutely. And... I mean, it's going to be hard for them to sort of execute towards any site. Just a single HE grenade and got to love. Mardo has got the AK-47 now. Gratis faction caught on the oh. green train. White tags him so low. Grat does get a kill onto Mardo. Gazza and James back to their teammates up. Gazza gets a double kill the P90. White somehow still alive. But he's stuck at CTCon with just a Glock. If he can take the AWP off, good on him. But I don't think there's much more damage he can do. He can take down Gazza. But I think that's it for him. That is indeed going to be it for him as James takes him down. And Legacy, I think... Probably a little unbeknownst to them, the gratisfaction down on 2 HP, but if they had known, they'd be a little disappointed not to pick up at least one more kill in that round. It was a pretty average uh, eco coming out. I mean, both sides pretty on par. Two kills on your eco is about the best you can expect, really, for Legacy there. But they'll buy into this one and hope for something better coming into the seventh round. Well, still doing damage towards the economy is good, and James has actually forced up an AWP now. So, if Legacy are able to make their couple of initial picks work, all of a sudden... You know, Legacy can seriously take it and force immunity onto an eco. That's it, though. Some pressure towards A as well as Vines. The T's have busted out in towards that inner train yard. And now they're busting out of Vines. The Drive Faction has no idea whatsoever. Just shot in the back. Yeah, no one holding in towards Ivy there for immunity. A bit of an interesting decision. It's going to cost Gratisfaction his life. Gazza and Destiny, though, doing good work. Gazza almost getting a second. Does get traded out by Jester in the end. A 3v2 in the favor of Legacy. And that smoke is going to slow down Burn, but not before Burn manages to find a kill onto White. Burn, though, escaping up the ladder on 7 HP, so he'll have to be careful with his HP throughout this round. And the bomb not yet near the bomb train. Unfortunately, Jess is not the one carrying that. It is Dev K who's on only 6 HP. And everything slows down once again in this round. Legacy at the moment seems Dev K a little bit too petrified to even move at the moment but eventually we'll have to get that bomb down. Yeah, they haven't found James' position as of this time. I mean, James is still lurking towards that CT area. Now, falling back towards B site, looks like Legacy have controlled this A site, so they're going to go for that plant. The CT is going to retake together. Bird steals a Molotov to use. A, a well-placed Molotov will kill Dev K, but similarly, Jester also has a Molotov as well, and he's going to be holding this for the CTs when they go onto the bomb. Such a crucial round now coming out for Legacy. They really need to fight back early in this first half. And if they let too much more go here for Team Immunity, it might just be the map sliding in the favor of Immunity. But at the moment, Immunity trying to make their way back into that bomb site. James starting off well on this retake. is able to take down Dev K. Gives up a bit of his HP, though. As a result, now it's down to Jester in a 1v2. He has utilities to work with. Burn. The bomb is planted very well for Jester here. He gets the clutch. And that's a round on the board there for Legacy. He had a Molotov, though. I'm just wondering why he didn't use it. Yeah. I mean, with aim like that, you don't need to use Molotov with game sense like that. Well played by Jester. He's going to get himself an AWP as well. It's going to force immunity into a very poor buy. And look at that. Barely any utility to use. They still have rifles. Yeah. But with just so much lack of defensive grenades. I mean, they still have a couple of smoke grenades. They still have a couple of incendiaries and HEs. It's just going to make their job difficult towards that late round where Legacy will excel at. Exactly, and uh, it's a good point because Legacy at the moment have just been playing relatively slowly, so uh, plenty of time for them to eat up all of those utilities from Immunity and make their life a little bit easier in towards that late round, like you say, and also in towards, uh, you know, if they get a bomb down, trying to defend that bomb plant with some of the utilities as well, which Immunity in that situation would probably be lacking. At the moment, though, Immunity have used up uh, both of their incendiaries. And a, mol uh, and a smoke. There goes the last one as well. Gaza, still a minute 15 on the clock here for Immunity. They'll have to rely on their flashbangs and aim as Legacy look to enter one of these bomb sites. Certainly a good setup now for Legacy in this round. Definitely looking to follow up on that victory in the last round as well. 
Yeah, and the only sniper on the field at the moment is going to be Jester, and it looks like he's going to be making his way towards B halls as well. Destiny, just seeing where he can spot towards SL and T Con. That's not much information so far. James, though, opening up on Gotolov, and once again, this is the part which really bothers me about Legacy. They the just flexing. have one member just always pushing ahead so aggressively. No one to trade for him either. Exactly, and. I mean, Legacy just put themselves in a harder position as they go towards that B site. You're exactly right, but Immunity have used all bar one flashbang available to them. James gets one, but immediately traded out there by Jester. So it's a 3v4. The situation's still not super dire here for Legacy, but the timer ticking down isn't going to make things easy. Destiny gets a bit of damage across there, and in the end, Gratisfaction is able to pick up White. Mardo gets caught off, reloading, and Gratisfaction closes out Jester in the end as well. So what could have been a very good round coming out there from Legacy, certainly the odds stacked somewhat in their favor. They really, in the end, just gifted over to Immunity, particularly Gotzloff walking out onto that B-bomb site for no reason, really. He just walked into the up, I believe it was upper B, but just by himself, and yeah. he just got picked off. He only had a Tech-9, didn't even have an AWP to utilize that long-range combat. And why wasn't he supported by someone than AK-47? Why was he so impatient? I Nevertheless, I mean, that's going to cost Legacy. They're forced into possibly a double eco situation. Some of the members on 1400, and Destiny playing so aggressively. He's going to miss a lot of shots on towards Mardo, though. Oh, sorry, White in SL. I mean, Legacy, they've gotten some information, but no further to getting that bomb down in this ninth round. Yeah, you're absolutely right, but really, the best they can hope for in this round probably is to get that bomb down. They are, of course, on the eco. That grenade not doing much damage over to Gotzloff, so... They'll be happy with that one. Really, though, Immunity very much should be able to close this round out without much difficulty at all. And the aim, I suppose, in this one for Immunity is to pick up a round without losing too many members because even though they've got six on the board, their economy isn't looking that great and Destiny's doing a good job of it. Finding three, and he's going to get the fourth as well there. In the end, uh, a very good round for Immunity. Exactly what they need. Five alive. Now they don't really have to buy all that much into this round and the economy starts to grow. Yeah, we just take a quick look at the scoreboard once again. I mean, the reversal of scores, I guess. I mean, now it's Dev K that's on top frags and five kills. White on the bottom with just a single kill. But they're forcing up into this round. Armor, Tech Knight, and Galil's just hoping for a fast rush, I guess, at this stage because that's not going to be able to take down rifles at long range. A lot of grenades coming over towards A site. They're charging in. Defensive grenades being thrown now by the CTs. Yeah, good utility use here from Immunity. Definitely slowing things down from Legacy and holding off this push coming out from the T side. And it's a two for one trade at the moment. Make that a three for one as another player from Legacy does go down. White and Jester have a bit of a job to do here for the Legacy guys. White has to retrieve himself an M4. Jester with a Galil. They'll try and make their way onto this A-bomb side. And White probably, you feel, should have closed that one out. Is going to be taken down by Burn from behind. It's Jester in a one versus three. And now a zero versus three. Jester going to be going down again. Immunity picking up another round. Eight on the board now. Really. I mean, Legacy. Legacy. Legacy, by trying to force into that round, just barreling towards A site, just reeks of desperation. I mean, yeah. they can. They, as of this time, they should just take that tactical pause and just go. And just do exactly what they did in Overpass. Sure, the score may not have been the same. But the situation is very, very similar. Momentum heavily against them. They don't know exactly how to crack in. Now they've just brought up Deagles as well as the Scout. Gotzlov nearly gets spotted out by James. James missing a lot of shots of the M4. He's not going to be happy with that. Still can't finish his mark. Not even punished for triple peeking. And I guess that's the tale as Burn now comes out towards Inners and gets another frag. Uh, yep. Burn doing a good job against this sort of eco coming out from Legacy. Really not much to say, I guess. Immunity just doing what they should be doing in this situation. Making sure they don't lose any more members than they need to. And just trying to restrict the freedom of Legacy. It's working out very well so far on the CT side for Immunity. This should be number nine. Yeah, the, the whole baffling thing just said was that just how confident Immunity were. Normally, you won't see in situations where they'll just triple peak or quadra peak and risk the kill, but they're just going in because they go, you know what, we believe Legacy can't punish, un punish us, and that's Ultimately, the problem, Legacy aren't punishing them for those overpeaks. So as Legacy are now going towards that B site, only Burn is anchoring there, and they may be coming straight towards him. Burn's going to get one, and he's going to re-peak. Once again, he's just so confident, just trying to take these aim deals, and he's winning them. He's going to get two. Jester does put him down, but he's back down to 23 HP. He doesn't have the bomb with him, or he does, but he can't get it down. Yeah, Burn, usually pretty good on that B-bomb site uh, for whatever team he was playing for at the time which I'm mostly speaking about, is when he was playing for the Chiefs. 
And uh, seems to be moving that across here to Immunity. Sitting on 10 and 3, holding on to that bomb site very well. Gratisfaction though, doing a bit of work as well. 10 and 1. Certainly really, James, the explosive superstar, 15 exactly. kills and 4 deaths. And James was doing quite good work on Overpass as well. So, this new immu immunity lineup really starting to shape up. So, you could argue yet to be particularly tested by Legacy. Gratisfaction picking up Jester there. The smoke grenade going down into A main from Destiny. He is going to be taken down, punished there by White. Yeah, and Legacy, they're able to equalize the situation. But once again, Burn didn't buy armor. Fair enough. And Didn't he's going to get out. punished for it. I mean, he's yeah. just going to get shot, taken down very easily, like just like that. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Three versus four here for Immunity. One of the few times Legacy is actually going to find themselves with a player advantage, so they definitely need to take advantage of this and really start to turn things around here. They'd be wanting to get more than two rounds on their T side, that's for sure. And this is uh, their best opportunity yet. Yeah, but James anchoring that B site once again. The big man himself. Gaza now just rotating between CTCon. Knows that the threat is still present on that A site with 55 seconds left on the timer. DevK just waiting to go at SL. It looks like Mardo towards T-Con. The bomb also coming towards T-Con. And James just underneath White Toto towards that upper ramp. They don't know each other. They don't know they're both there. Yeah, White has no idea. James is just b below him. Although, does James know White is there? He didn't make that look easy. But in the end, gets it done. Probably sacrifices about 49 more hit points than he really should have. Still, though, it's a kill there for Legacy and swings it ever more in their favor in this 4v2. Yeah, and he, grant, he gives himself so much map positioning as well. I mean, Gaza draws out the orb shot from Gotsalov, but there's nothing more that he can do. Just going to be falling back with Gratisfaction just to save. No no point in contesting in this round. It's very, very hard to crack open that B site. That's it, though. Mardo also going on the hunt, pushing towards that IV position. Does put out Gratisfaction. Tags him low. Grat doesn't land that first shot. Gaza going to be flashing out. Mardo's fully blind. Couldn't hop towards Dumpster. And Grat oh. going huge, getting two kills. Grat indeed gets two kills, hanging on to that up for the moment. And it seems like these remaining two Legacy members may not be too excited about the prospect of chasing down that orb after seeing that from Gratisfaction. Still, three on the board now for Legacy. Better than two, but they're going to need to follow it up here. If their economy gets reset now, Immunity will have a very nice time of the final few rounds. Absolutely, and a team immunity at this time, they have for about 4 to 5k, or 4k left in Destiny and Gaza's bank, 3k and 2k, so, I mean, Legacy at this time, they can still pick up two rounds, hopefully, mm -hmm. if they're able to take this one, they'll force immunity onto probably a force buy on the richer players and eco on the others, but if they lose this one, I mean, Legacy Esports would probably be forced onto that double eco, they lost those two AKs against Grat, and that's probably something that shouldn't have happened. No, definitely shouldn't have happened there. Although they did want to get that AWP out of the hands of Grat. Still, wasn't worth it in the end, as we know. And that's not too good. Yeah, shooting each other in the back, that's <laughs> definitely not a favourable situation as this no. time. They need to make sure they communicate and watch their radar. As Vines is pretty clear, Gratisfaction is going to move out of Ivy back towards that green train. Going to be spotting towards T-Con as well as SL as of this time. So a lot of map control still being gained by Immunity and Burn and James still have a full set of utility to work with. Still really no control of fines at the moment actually for Immunity. So we may see another situation like we did earlier in this half where Legacy do have a player rotating around through that area and get themselves an easy pick onto Gratisfaction. Though it does seem Gratisfaction has moved back and good timing as well. Jess are going to be going down. Another great start into this round for Immunity. And once again, that number advantage going and going in their favor and team immunity on that B site you can see just burn immediately falling back he was at uppers just then but he's not going to risk losing his life by playing aggressively got to loft though we'll get that trade once again and now they're coming out towards the A site Gazza though staying towards heaven destiny nearly taken out by white devk does find his mark at heaven and it's going to be burn that's just stuck towards CityCon. good flash by him buys a bit more time for that molotov to die out but destiny gonna be naded out three versus three well three versus two but now three versus one as DevK is able to take down Burn. James going to be coming out on the retake. Is he going to be able to clutch this one out? It's not super important, but it would be a great clutch coming out three versus one and really would swing the momentum very heavily into the favor of Immunity and absolutely crush the Legacy guys. He's playing very slowly at the moment, but should be wrapped around upon by Mato. Tried to flick across, didn't manage to land the shot in the end there. And around an important round coming out for Legacy as well. Yeah, Immunity actually just forcing straight back up into this round. They... That's very, very risky. I mean, yeah. they're not going to be able to afford much utility, and it's not really working out for them on the A side, so they may need to actually put more numbers there. 
Because even though Grat is able to get that first pick, I mean, he just gets traded out immediately afterwards. So yeah. something's not working from the A side. I mean, Legacy doing good work. Even though they lose the first member, at least they're getting the trades now. Yeah, regardless, the force coming out here from Immunity, so they definitely feel like they can get something out of this round. Legacy have got a uh, pretty perfect buy, really. And Immunity have got only three over towards the A site. A lot of the time we'll see a 1-4 split with just a single player defending the B site. But I guess quick rotations here for Immunity. They should be able to get four over to that A bomb site should they need it relatively quickly. Having said that though, as you mentioned, the A site hasn't been the greatest of holds lately for Immunity. It was pretty good early on. Yeah, they just need to make sure that whenever they use these defensive grenades, they're able to get at least a kill or a trade off it. And it just didn't really work out because they're pressured on towards that bomb site itself. Mm -hmm. They can't get out of CTCon because that's good ball top usage by Legacy to deny any backup, so to speak. So as we hit the 40, uh, 54 second mark in the round, I mean, Legacy, once again, just playing slow, slow, just playing exactly what they're good at, which is the late game. Yeah, and it's... A pretty good strategy here. Immunity haven't got many utilities left to play with Burn, funnily enough, as uh, the only incendiary grenade here for Team Immunity. The rest of them just hanging on to that one flashbang. Gaz will be throwing his. And Legacy are going to be slowed down just slightly by those flashbangs. But Gots, oh, he probably should have hit that shot. Would have saved Jester's life in the end, though. He's able to close it out onto Destiny. So a one for one. Definitely could be worse there. Needs to win this battle against Gratisfaction in the end. Gratisfaction wish missing another shot and will be punished there by DevK. In the meanwhile, Godslov did pick up one onto James and this force by definitely not working out too well for Immunity. Burn trying to say otherwise. It's down to Gazza though now in a one versus three. Only four HP to play with. Can he clutch this one out for Immunity? Would be great for them to get 10 rounds on the board here on their CT side, but it's going to be so tough against these three remaining players of Legacy, and it does look like he's just going to pick up that AWP and fall back in towards the B-bomb site. In the end, probably a good idea. Yeah, smart play by Gaza, but he needs to make sure he gets out of that bomb explosion radius. And guess he agrees by that nod. <laughs> the T's, though, on that hunt, though, Legacy are going to be confident once again, and that's well played by them, just, dr just waiting, waiting, seeing exactly how many utilities the CTs have, and then striking. Five rounds on the board for them. Crucial. Crucial five rounds coming out there from Legacy. And now, all of a sudden, the Scorper doesn't actually look so bad for Legacy, where previously it was looking pretty poor. But those three rounds in a row coming out here, very good. And uh, Immunity heading into this one with uh, really a less than ideal buy. Legacy, of course, have a very good one. It's a tough round now for Team Immunity. Though saving that AWP through for Gratisfaction is a big deal. Yeah, and it's a motley buy as well. Gratisfaction with the AWP, a scout on burn and two pistols and a Mag-7. If they were unable to hold the A-Sight, look at that. Burn's instantly going to be taken out towards B by Gotslov. Gotslov, honestly, in these last three to four rounds, has done so much work at the AWP. A big, a big congratulations to him because he's been, honestly, the big turning factor in this game. Now, really, you have to feel it comes down to Gratisfaction. He's holding a fantastic line, and he picks up Gotslov. So, nullifying that player advantage, but Team Immunity still have that weapon disadvantage, and Legacy also have plenty of utilities to use here as well. It's really just going to come down to the aim of Team Immunity. And, well, when you have a player like Destiny on your team, not a bad idea, really, to be relying on your aim. He picks up one with that Desert Eagle. Now a three versus four, and Immunity may be able to come back from the brink and pick up their 10th round. Still, it's not over yet for Legacy. Yeah, and we see that White at the moment is pressuring towards uppers. Has spotted out James. Tags him down towards 67 HP. Oh, now good 15. Grenade. Good grenade coming out. But Destiny, once again, just knows when to rotate. Destiny doing a fantastic job on this round. Gratisfaction. Picking up Jester there as well. It's his second for the round. Destiny and Gratisfaction definitely coming up with the goods in this one for Team Immunity. Gratisfaction closing out his third one there. And in the end, it's a good first half probably for both teams. I think they'll be pretty happy with that. Exactly the same scoreline that we saw coming out from Overpass, though. Yeah, similar story pretty much to Overpass. I mean, there, it was a dominating beginning from Immunity, yep. then Legacy Resurge come back with a couple of rounds and go, you know what, we're pretty confident, but then they just lose their grip towards the end, you know, start making... I mean, that final round, it wasn't any silly errors. That was just better play coming out from IM, just yep. getting those individual picks. It's uh, definitely a very similar sort of a storyline coming out on this map uh, that we are seeing here on Train, and really I think Legacy are going to be hoping they'll be able to rewrite this book because we all know how it turned out on the first map of Overpass. The six rounds very easily going into the favor of immunity on that second half. So Legacy definitely won't be wanting to allow that to happen once more. All starts with that pistol round, which they weren't able to pick up last time. 
we'll see if they can do it this time. Yeah, and it looks like Immunity going to be going towards that B site, and we have White going to be spotting it. Actually coming close towards SL, but they are going down those B stairs in towards that B upper halls at the moment. White has not been spotted, but that is such aggressive position that if he gets spotted out, he's going to get punished heavily for it. Gratisfaction, though, might be playing with fire here. White has been spotted out, certainly, but he's also spotted out a few heads that he might like to pop. And he gets the reload off before they come around the corner and finds a second. Good stuff from him there, and probably should have been punished a little bit harder by Immunity. Very quick rotate coming across from Legacy. Maybe a little bit preemptive, but it's not going to cost them. There's Immunity just hanging around in the brown halls for now. Yeah, White should not have gotten away with that second kill. That may be the critical decider as well, because there was some yeah. friendly damage done in that scuffle. Now James down to 28 HP, Burn on 86 and Destiny on 70. All the CTs just ready to come towards that B side. Jester in that inner train has spotted out Destiny. Aim deals coming out all across the board. Destiny is going to take one. Devgate though answering with his own. And now a two on, I was going to say a two on three, but now a one on three and Destiny is going to get blown to shreds. Yeah, it would have been nice to see a bomb plant coming out there from Immunity, but Legacy pick up that important pistol round. So already they have started off better than the second half on Overpass. And they've secured six rounds there. It's uh, looking okay in the second half so far for Legacy, but still very early to call. And they've invested in four UMPs. Jester won't have enough to buy a rifle unless he goes for that FAMAS and just a tiny bit of armor. But exactly what Legacy needed to start off here. So you feel maybe they might be able to come back into this one. I'm going to ask you, throw you under the bus. Is Legacy or the train? Or the train? Or the train? Good one. On train, Is Legacy so going to be able to do it? Look, still early days, and we we. I mean, it's a good start. That pistol round, if they're able to build up their economy, make sure they don't lose too much. I mean, Team Immunity are going to be forcing into this one because they weren't able to get the bomb plant down. Mm. Similarly, they won't be able to buy an orc towards their their third round. They shut that down nine ten. Yep. Their economy is looking great, and all of a sudden they have so much utility to play with. And then I am suddenly go, oh, what do we do to get back into this? We we don't know how to knock the door down. We don't know how to get into this A and B site. Mm. You've got to remember, it is Legacy's pick here, and we actually haven't seen this iteration of the Immunity lineup playing on train just yet. So, a bit of a trial by fire, I suppose. Although, I think they could have probably picked some more difficult opponents than Legacy to go up for the first time on train. Still, uh, Legacy doing an okay job. It's very far from a good job so far on train. And they definitely need to pull things back here, because as I mentioned previously, throughout this cast, they haven't actually picked up a single win so far in our Season 2. Immunity sitting a little bit better at the moment, 2-1 and one after picking up that first map on Overpass. They went 1-1 one and one with Atletico last week, and I think that's a pretty good result actually starting out there for Immunity. I mean, Atletico looking like one of the strongest teams in, in the competition at the moment. Absolutely. I mean, Atletico is still the reigning champions of the ESL, AU, and NZ yep. uh, competition, so definitely looking to make their mark. And I would say Immunity, though, they would be shooting themselves in a little bit because they, they honestly believe that they are a top-tier team that will be going internationally soon. That's I think they have a right to believe that, yeah. don't you? They they need to back it up with res, res, res yes. results now. Oh, I can't find the word. but Because that's that's the reason why they, they're they looking for their fifth. Because even though Gaz is feeling at the moment, he can't compete overseas. Okay. So that's the reason why they're looking for their fifth player. Right. And I mean, there's not that much talent going around that's not already snapped up by a team here from Immunity. So I wonder who they are going to pick up. Maybe... Uh, some shuffles going to happen sooner or later. Immunity, obviously, a very big orb with a lot of buying power. So we might be seeing something happen. Although, uh, at the It'll moment... a mystery. <laughs> no, I, I don't know what's going on with them, to be honest. I'd like to see them pick up a solid fifth at the moment, though. Gaza, he has been a little bit quiet here, I think, on train. Um, but it's not working out too badly for Immunity overall. Gaza, five and seven at the moment. But the rest of the team definitely pulling their weight. Yeah, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's a team game. I yes. mean, if I say team game, and then probably put exemptions, rats, <laughs> because or just like you know, when some player just hits thirty or forty bombs on yeah. a map, then there's nothing you can do. But every single map, if you want to win it, you need your core three firing effectively. You can't just have a single player just go. You know what? We're just gonna get tons of frags. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know what, guys, if uh, this. CSGO action is whetting your appetite for a little bit of competition. We do have a competition going on over with our friends over at ASUS. You can check that out at ROG, ROG even, ROG-Masters.com. It's going to be on the 4th of September, which is a Sunday, the first Sunday of September. And, uh, well, you should check that one out if you're interested in some CSGO action, getting involved and all that sort of stuff. It's got a large prize pool, doesn't it? Well, I myself won't be playing because I'm not a very good player. I saw you just play that one-on-one. -on -one. 
I was oh, yeah. playing that one-on-one backstage. Yeah, yeah, but that was against our production team, so uh, I don't know if that really... I don't know, Elfish, you're looking pretty strong there. Maybe your, maybe your team immunity is fifth. Uh, maybe that's who they're looking for. No, I've got a very nice job here at ESL now. I don't think I'm going to be giving that up for uh, the struggles of being a pro player here in Australia, but certainly things are getting a lot better here. Obviously, we've got $20,000 coming up throughout our Season 2 prize pool, and uh, there's lots of other competitions going on around the place with uh, some pretty decent prize pools starting to really come to the fore here in the Australian and New Zealand CSGO scene. So definitely bright and early days here for us here, at least in our region. Obviously Absolutely. things very big overseas, but uh, certainly hoping to see some big stuff coming out in 2017. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the critical factor of this is just having more competitions is that, you know, before we had the, I mean, we always refer to the Oceanic Shuffle, mm -hmm. but now it's just more of, because there are so many competitions, if you risk shuffling, you're out. There's no such thing as an off-season anymore. So, yeah. I mean, that's good that there are so many competitions coming out. I mean, at one side, you may argue, wow, we have, we don't know which one to pick, but at the same time, it forces teams to stay together because yeah. now it's like, you know, hey, you're rewarded for staying together. Well, that is the hope, isn't it? Obviously, to get uh, some of these teams starting to grow, and we've definitely seen that coming out from the likes of Atletico and Parallax, who have been together as fairly consistent units for a fair while at the moment. Atletico, at least six months, maybe more, Definitely Parallax, more. probably not quite as long. Uh, I think they might have had some recent er uh, changes, although I'm trying to struggle to remember which their most recent think, one was. Um, I think with Parallax, so when they were coming, when they were still Trident, after the, after the CG autumn season, they took out, I think they still had that Hats, Lonsdale, Yellow Core. Yeah. And yeah. then they also picked up Jokes as well as Raz at the time. Right, yeah. So, obviously, they've been together for a while and, you know, it's really working out very well for them at the moment. Legacy have been for, together for a while. Not quite working as well for them, but uh, there's a few other teams that have been hanging around. Avant Skyfire God. in particular, I think, one that's been together as a relative unit for a fair while. And they, I feel, are starting to get a bit better as well. Do you, do you sort of think they might have a chance here in Season 2? Absolutely. I mean, Skyfire have always been the team that's... I guess everyone just wants to will on because they're sitting just on that border ready to just break yeah. the cost win. So they're just looking for a chance and what better to do it for the ESL, AU and NZ Season 2 Championship. Alrighty guys, looks like we are finally having our player reconnect here and we're going to be back into the second round of the second half. Need I remind you, Immunity 10 and 6 up. They've just lost the pistol round and now heading back into this one, they've decided to force into it, try and keep that pressure on Legacy. Yeah, and Destiny going to pick up a scout, already tagged down towards 60 HP or 59 to be precise. The CTs otherwise for Legacy, four UMPs and a single for Mars. They're going to be looking to duel at close range. They should have the advantage. No head armor except on Gaza. All the other Ts only have body... Oh, sorry, I should say it's Burn. On Burn, he has head armor as well. But otherwise, look at that. James already tagged down to 24 HP. Destiny also being tagged up a little bit onto 59. The FAMAS coming out for Jester, the only rifle here for Legacy, but the UMPs we know have some pretty good armor penetration power regardless, so Legacy should be pretty okay into this one. Definitely don't want to lose this round. They did, I think, lose one anti-eco on Overpass, which definitely not necessarily turned things around for Immunity because they were already ahead, but definitely made things a little bit easier. That's a nice grenade coming out from Gotzlaw. Yeah, big touchdown coming here from Green Train. That's an excellent throw. It's going to give Legacy the advantage, and... As you know it, I mean, they're just going to try and push out of Ivy. They have Gazza and James working together, but Gotzlov waiting with a UMP, gets one and gets two. Yep, standard stuff coming out on this anti-eco here from Legacy. As of yet, well, I lie. I was about to say they haven't lost a player, but Satisfaction proving me wrong there. He's able to get one. Not sure he's going to be able to really hope for much more. Gotzlov closing out his fourth kill of the round to close things out. And in, in the end, a pretty good result for Legacy, though they do lose that for Mars. Not able to bring it through to this round. Shouldn't really be too big of a deal anyway. Gotzloff looks like he's going to try and buy into an M4 here. Just chucks that UMP over to Jester. So all's well that ends well for Legacy. I would have expected him to, stay to just buy another SMG. He should know that team immunity are going to be another eco. So a bit surprising to see him to pick up the M4, but I guess they need some long-range power just in case that they need to engage yeah, in those long-range deals. I think deals. they'd be pretty comfortable that they should be able to take it through to the next round anyway. So I don't think it's that big of a risk. Yeah, uh, of losing it. Though, if it drops into the hands of Immunity, maybe they can use it. Still, probably clutching at straws there. And Gotzloff, though, playing very far forward with the M4. Is in a potential position to get picked up here by Immunity. Also in a position to be able to pick up a double kill. But he is going to start off well onto Gazar. Destiny, oh! Just gets taken down by Jester there, who saves his teammate Gotzloff. White able to...
frag. Bag one onto burn and really across the board, the kill's just going in the way of Legacy, as you would expect here on this eco round, or anti-eco even, for Legacy. Yeah. And Gratis Faction, I mean, last man left standing, only has a Glock. I mean, Kotzlov tagged down to 2 HP. I mean, White's going to take the final kill with the UMP. All members are live for Legacy, so that's going to be great for their bank account. They don't need to reinvest in that head armor or possibly kit as well. So they're going to be confident in buying into this round. White's going to stay with that UMP. And as you mentioned earlier, the UMP is actually a great SMG now because it has so yeah. it has great armor penetration. Fire faster than both the FAMAS, and I think it has only slightly less than the A4. Yeah, it's, it's very similar to the M4, actually, in that it can in the damage and the fire rate and pretty much everything except it just costs a fair bit less so it's sort of like a mini m4 in a sense a lot of people saying it's a better pickup than the famas most of the time and uh, legacy seem to agree i suppose because they've decided really to take the majority of those umps through in those anti ecos and also they've taken one into this round though speaking of this round it hasn't started off too well for legacy they've already lost one player They've also lost, that's their AWPA as well, just, I mean, going down towards Vines. It's it's not going to make it easier for them. It looks like White should be rotating across to see if he can pick up the AWP, but good shot coming out from James once again to get the first entry frag. He is just waiting towards Ivy as the rest of his teammates rotating towards that B site now. Just slowly working their way across, just trying to see if they can burn the CT nades. And there's not much left defensively, just two Molotovs, or incendiary grenades, should I say, an HE and a flashbang for the CTs to use for immunity, still three smoke grenades to use to execute on a site. Legacy don't have that much in their back pocket, really, to hold off on a push from immunity, so this is looking a little bit tough for Legacy at the moment. Three over towards the A-bomb site, but does seem like to be the option of choice here for immunity. That Molotov's going to restrict their movement a little bit, and White has spotted out a few of them. Mardo very quick on the rotate, able to grab one with the AWP. James does respond back onto White, and the bomb's going to be going down here for immunity. Destiny chiming in with one as well, with an AWP of his own. Yeah, and at the moment, Mardo finding himself alone. Yeah, and Gaza also finds Gotzlov just lurking towards Ivy. And so Mardo's going to be the last man left standing. He does have the AWP, so he needs to save this. And, well, Gaza is just waiting at the moment. So if Mardo, Mardo needs to land this, P, this USB shot, he does in the end. Gaza was very, very low, but Mardo needs to sprint away now. Team Immunity can't lose any more guns. Burn needs to be very careful. Down to one HP, nearly dying to another Molotov. <laughs> yeah, well, that would be a bit funny, wouldn't it, considering his namesake? But... Uh, immunity going to be picking up 11 rounds on the board now. And Legacy have done a little better than o Overpass. And Mardo trying to hang on to this orb. He's going to be pushed, I think, by James. But will land the shot quite well. He's mm. doing a lot of damage. He has done a lot of e economic damage. And probably in the end, really not a great idea for Immunity to chase down that orb. Because now they're going to have a bit of a lackluster buy coming into this one. Just some utilities lacking. Due to the fact that they've had to re-buy two AKs. Also Burn running out here with a UMP. And... Having your entry fragger on a UMP, not the greatest of situations. Yeah, Destiny going to be going for that fast entry pick. He's going to be mollied out, though, so he's going to come back across. Gotzlov, oh, he does spot out Gotzlov, but he doesn't scope back in on time. And Gotzlov now on a fast track push in towards T-Con. At the same time, though, the T's more than happy just to take up a B-Halls. And Gotzlov just playing close to that blue train. I mean, standard action, I guess, but yep. except for Jester who's pushed out of Ivy. Yeah, he has got a bit of information down towards Ivy there. Gotzlov spotting out Destiny, who's fully flashed and picks himself up a very easy kill in the end there. Destiny not even hoping to offer any resistance in that. And Legacy go 5-4 and four up. Yeah, and that's a great start once again because as soon as you get the numbers advantage, easy to hold off the push. They're able to put an extra member towards that B site. You can see that mardo has got that AWP close towards CT Con, probably either watching inners or uppers as of this time. Gazzas, though, slowly making his way out of SL at the moment. Bomb is towards toilets. And all of Team Immunity playing so passively as we hit the 50-second time. Yeah, they certainly are. And uh, I guess you can't really blame them having lost that initial player. It is hard to sometimes say, yeah, let's go. We can try and get into this site. When you are already a player down, everything has to be perfect here for Team Immunity if they want to be able to get into that site and get a bomb plant. And even then, it's going to be tough to hold off the retake from Legacy, who are looking okay so far on their CT side, though. They did just drop that last round. It's down to Gotzloff now, up on the blue train, see if he can find anything. Does drop off it, but Gratis Faction would have heard that and answers very well. James bopping around the corner there, picks up Chester, and DevK does manage to respond, but James on a bit of a roll now. He's found two. He's able to find a third there on Tomato as well. White, the sole survivor for Legacy. Ten seconds left on that bomb, but... White not in a position to deny that plant from Gaza. 
Yeah, and slowly coming out of Old Bomb Train. Needs to get a couple of good surprising shots. He's taking it out. Gaza now comes across. He does take down James as well. Now suddenly a one-on-one, -on -one, but the plant is good for Gratisfaction. Waiting behind Red Train. White, though, coming on top of Red Train as well. He spotted out Gratisfaction. Knows exactly where it is. He's spraying, but he misses. Oh, no. Wow. Gratisfaction is going to take that one-on-one. -on -one. White, oh, so close once again. Another one on three. But Team Immunity are going to pick it up, and that's going to force Legacy onto an eco. Yeah, there, that was definitely a situation that uh, should have been won for Legacy. The spray down was not good at all. And Gratisfaction just able to hit the shot in the end and did a good amount of work there for Legacy, uh, for Immunity in the end. But Legacy will be uh, really kicking themselves, though. Admittedly, in a 3v1, they probably shouldn't have won it anyway, but in the position they were in, still, those are the rounds that you need to win if you're going to come back from a deficit like this. And unfortunately for Legacy, wasn't the case. This time, Force on the Eco, Immunity making their way out onto the B side. Yeah, and White unable to pick up that CZ, so he's going to be even more disheartened now. Knew that he should have taken that one on three. Knew he should have taken that gun as well. Gots, though, finding Burn all the way towards T-Con. So just outside of Blue Train. So he's going to find himself in... Just a UMP. I mean, it's not the worst gun, but not the best gun either. Probably wanted an AK. Gazza, so aggressive this P90, finding more frags for himself. Gazza loves the P90, and the P90 loves Gazza. As he's going to try and peek around into the connector, finds himself his second as well. Really, pretty much what you would expect coming out from that round. Legacy not able to do a whole lot on their CT side. And Immunity will be going 13 up now within striking distance. It becomes very difficult now for Legacy to come back into this one. 8 and 13, it's not the worst of score lines that find themselves in tonight, but still a very imposing one. Immunity from here, you should think, should be able to close it out. Yeah, Jester will be able to find a UMP in the end. Gaza does get taken down, he was tagged down very low, but they're able to rebuy. Still look, look, it's still doable for Legacy Esports. If you just take a look at Team Immunity's economy, it's still so low. It's just, as soon as they lose a couple of players in yeah. any single round, it's just going to be kept down very, very low. Similarly said, though, for the CTs, they're going to force up into this one. Three, four M4s and a UMP with limited utility. So they're going to have to hope they get these aim duels correct. Yeah, and Mato is going to start that one off well. Jester may be challenged over towards Ivy here. He's uh, just peeking around the corner for now, but the smoke just keeping immunity back in that area. He has spotted out Gaza, but won't be able to take the challenge in the end there. Destiny now trying to work his way out of main. Trying to pick up on the blue train, hasn't spotted anyone out, and can pretty safely get up onto the blue train, but will be challenged by DevK, whose head he spots. DevK, I don't think, has spotted out Destiny in the end, though. This is going to come down to seconds. Destiny just a little bit slow. I thought he might have been able to see the shoulder a little bit earlier there from DevK, but perhaps not the case. In the end, he'll settle for Mardo, and should be able to get one onto Gotzloff, but this is the spray down pretty poorly. Not really something we tend to see coming out from Destiny there, but this is looking like a round that might go in the favor of Legacy. Jester uh, has now found two. DevK finding himself one as well. Yeah, that was much better played. The aim now working for them. I mean, that was really Destiny spotting out so many counter terrorists just unable to react in time. It was only able to take down yeah. poor Mardo, who was just trying to push towards E-Box. Mm. But now this is the danger. Immunity forced onto a pistol buy. Yep. Legacy, they're going to be looking to reinforce their economy. So any guns they can keep now is absolutely critical. Immunity, they're so close, but they still have to clutch out these rounds. Yeah, they definitely do. And uh, they can hope for the best here in this round, but probably unlikely they're going to be able to find too much, though. We have seen Immunity. They've been pretty good with their pistols throughout this series so far. And uh, making their way, or at least James making his way in towards Ivy. The rest of Immunity just holding back for the moment, but it does seem like the bomb may be heading over towards... The B site at the moment. Destiny leading the charge with that Tech 9. No armor at all for immunity to work with, so they will need to just get some very quick headshots over to these legacy players because extended battles always going to go to those guys with the armor and the rifles. Absolutely. And as soon as they charge in, they need to make sure these shots go in their favor. No utility to work with either. So it's either that Tech 9 or Dink, otherwise they're donezo. Exactly. So, I mean, we can see that. I believe it's white on top of that B-bomb train, just watching up as that's where the bomb's going to be coming out of. Gaz are going to be shoulder peeking down towards 16 HP. That's not a good start. White's going to force them out. That bomb's still no closer coming towards any bomb site, even though all five members are still alive. Yeah, well, five members alive, but only with pistols to work with. This isn't a great situation for immunity. No matter how you... I should say it. How you place it? I don't know. I was, I was trying to make a... a, a not a pun, but like a saying there. It didn't really work out too well. It's getting a bit late here for me, Karath. Give me a break. That's all right. Uh, 
It's, it was your birthday only yesterday, so yeah. we can. I suppose we can give you some leniency. Well, thanks for that one. But James at the moment trying not to give too much leniency to Legacy, though. Not working out too well for him. He hasn't managed to land too many shots. And, well, now Legacy know exactly where he is. Gratisfaction, though, popping out from upper. He's going to pick up one. Might be able to get a bomb down here for immunity. Looks like Devk is going to be denied there by Burn as well. So suddenly we have a round on our hands. It is very heavily still weighted in the favor of Legacy, who have a Molotov and a couple of flashes to use. But Immunity, if they can find another quick kill here, maybe something to come of it. Chester, though, a very nice flash coming out from his teammate does deny Burn. And Mardo also able to pick up Gratisfaction there. So now 10 on the board here for Legacy, and they're starting to claw their way back in here. But still a very good eco coming out from Immunity. They get that bomb down. Yeah, and that's critical. I mean, once you get that ball down towards um, Gratisfaction pushing out of uppers, and at least taking one rifle off. Yeah. One, oh, I believe it was White and Dev K. I mean, taken out by Burns Deagle. Bomb plant comes down, which means that they can force up into this one with a good amount of utility. Also, that AWP and Gratisfaction now, so the Danger Man is out once again. Gotslop, though, with his own AWP. Mm -hmm. It's going to be exciting to watch. Definitely is. Hoping for a big finish to this one, like what we saw between Chiefs and Atletico. And certainly, at the moment, it seems to be heading that way, but Legacy still have a little bit of work to do. Jester aggressively pushing out into Ivy. We've seen him do this a couple of times, but he definitely hasn't overused it, so hopefully for him, at least, he'll be able to make something out of this. Doesn't know that Gazza and James are sitting there and wisely, in the end, decides to back off more so in towards CT territory. Gratisfaction didn't spot the cross there. White really needs to stay right in that position. If he peeks into Gratisfaction, you'd have to say it's going to be going the way of immunity here, especially considering Gaza has managed to find Jester there out towards Ivy. That was really strangely played by Jester. Did a lot, got a lot of information. Yeah. Tagged down Destiny low, fell back, and he decided to push forward. And that's not fortunate either. Mardo playing that T-Con position, going to be shot in the back by Gotzlob's orb. And... That's not how you want to start this round. Second time today that we've seen Legacy shooting each other. Mardo not going to be able to come up with anything there through the flashbang. And good stuff from Burn getting in there and getting that another pick for Immunity. It is now a three versus five situation. Legacy, they would have hoped to have been able to pick up this round, but it does look like it's going 14 for Immunity. James getting another kill there. That's going to stack the odds even more in their favor. Devk does respond onto Burn, but should be traded out here by Gratisfaction and is... Gotzloff in a 1v4, best case scenario, he's able to save this orb, but you can see James coming around from the B site. Gonna get absolutely deleted by Gotzloff. That a was a beautiful noise. shot. It was a beautiful shot, but Immunity very keen here to be able to chase down that orb. They have enough money to buy into the next round, regardless of how many guns they lose. So, Gotzloff will have a little bit of trouble here with uh, saving that weapon of his. Yeah, and now Destiny pressuring CT as well as Gratisfaction pushing up at the same time. Gots now stuck in the B train yard. This AWP needs to be saved. It's absolutely critical. As Grat, oh, he has spotted out Gots. They know exactly where he is, and I think he's not long for this world. He is going to be shot. Yep, there he is. Shot indeed. Gratisfaction picks that one up now. That's 14 there for Immunity. Only a couple away here from picking up a 2 0. Legacy, their buy is going to be serviceable, but not great. They still have an AWP, but no armor on Gotzalov, and only a single 5-7. I mean, it's not the worst situation to try to claw out of. I mean, Team Immunity's economy is still low, but you definitely wanted a couple, probably a couple more M4s. Yeah, saving that AWP would have been great for Gotzalov. He doesn't have armor into this one, so playing that glass cannon, but really, Legacy have got the best that they can hope for, and they need to make good work out of it. We've seen some good stuff coming out from them so far on train, but really haven't quite had enough to take it to Immunity just yet. At the moment, though, White is going to have to take the duel. He'll drop the smoke here, but Destiny will push through it, as Destiny does. Takes a bit of damage for his trouble, and at the moment, Team Immunity just getting wounded up a little bit. Legacy doing okay, but they don't have many utilities to hold things off here for very long. Immunity, even if they wait down this time, I have still got a good opportunity to pick up their 15th round. Yeah, and White did an excellent job there. If he fell, that B site would have just collapsed like dominoes, and Legacy... I would argue it would be shut out, but White Toto was able to hold himself, hold off that inner position while tags Destiny down towards 4 HP. So now, as the positions are going to be reset, Legacy have that boost towards Vines. I believe that is Jester on top of Dev K's head. So, good position as Destiny is pushing towards that Vines area. So, they should be able to treat an AK. Mm, well, trying times now for Legacy. They definitely need to pick up this round if they want to have any hope really getting anything in this round. I don't think a 15-15 is really something they'd have been hoping for, but Chiefs found themselves in a similar position and were able to at least get that one point out of it. 
but at the moment, Immunity doing a good job of bringing a couple of kills back. It's a three versus a three, as Mato was able to take down Burn. Now 17 seconds left on the clock here, but Immunity have complete control of that B site. Yeah, and Mato was trying to hold on for the longest time, but unfortunately couldn't hold on any longer. So now it's up to Jester and Devkay on a retake. They do have that kid on Devkay, and they have utility to work with, but Jester's going to get his head ripped off by Gaza. It's all to Devkay, takes him down in the trade. But now one and two, there goes that Molotov on towards the site. Devkay going to be counter Molotoving as well, but he has no smoke grenade to put out fires. He has a flashbang to work with. He spots out James, but still one and two. Time ticking away, and he's going to make a run for it. Grat's going to be wildly trying to shoot him in the back. Devk though is going to be able to make it out. Yeah, a pretty much unwinnable situation there for Devk. James coming around from behind did make a lot of noise, and really Devk wasn't able to capitalize on the knowledge that James was behind him. And even if he had, Gratisfaction was up towards uh, the upper area there with uh, a very good post plant position. So immunity on 15 now. Legacy hoping that this force bite is going to be enough. Wasn't enough in the last round there, but this is their very last chance. Yeah, with lack of utility, it just means that it just may mean that Team Immunity is going to push towards a different site. Team Immunity, no legacy, are on the ropes. They know that they just forced up. They know that they're just going to have pistols, so they're just going to wait it out a little. Oh, sorry, they're going to be forcing up. So they're just going to wait it out a little bit. Just wait for pushes, then probably just group up together. Probably push towards that B site. B site, very very easy to take when you have that numbers advantage. Indeed, it is a very very passive hold from White all the way back at the bottom of the B-bomb site. Fair enough, given that he has a scout, uh, but really won't be able to deny an entry onto that B site from immunity unless he hits some incredibly crazy shots with that scout. So uh, the best that I guess he can hope for at the moment is that, that immunity would make their way towards the A-bomb site, and they have done just that, but James will start off very well down to Jester, getting again the player advantage in the favor of immunity. Very quickly brought back though, and we're back to a three versus, well now a one. Very quick passage of play coming out from Immunity, finding a couple of frags in their favor. Now a 1v2 for White to negotiate here with the scout, and he has to go hero move as he makes his way in towards that bomb train with that scout. Gratisfaction, a very good flick in the end. It's going to be the guys from Immunity picking it up 2-0, and, oh, and a very good result from them in their week number two. They'll go 3-1 and one up overall here in our AUNNZ Championship Season 2. How would you feel about that one? Team Immunity looking pretty good. Yeah, I mean, in the end, Legacy, they did a lot better this time on their CT side, challenged immunity a little bit more, but it just wasn't enough in the end, and once again, just boiled down to that economy game. But, I mean, Legacy, even though they lost another 0-2, I mean, they have to take solace on the fact that they actually pushed immunity in that second one. Yeah. Definitely can improve from there. They started off on the weaker side on both both times. They started on the T side, so... Yeah. I mean, one could argue immunity may have just gone to a absolutely dominating start on the T side. We'll never know, but... At the very least, Legacy able to make a solid comeback, challenge immunity a little bit. Definitely something to look forward to. Definitely some good signs coming out there from Legacy. And really, 0-4 uh, and four down now. Their hopes for coming into the finals here in the ANZ, AU and NZ Championship really uh, starting to struggle at the moment. Next week going to be incredibly crucial for them. And really, all of the following weeks, I'd say, they're going to have to go... Uh, and pick up a 2-0 pretty much every time if they're going to have any chance. But if we have a look here at the standings at the end of week number two, Parallax sitting right up the top there. Really uh, the one and only sitting on four wins and zero losses. One stop and immunity though, trying to chase them down at the moment, sitting on those three wins. Down the bottom of the scoreboard, Chiefs and Legacy, their hopes are very much under pressure at the moment. And Avant-Garde as well, just struggling a little bit. But... Still it's early days throughout Season 2 here and plenty of opportunities for all these teams to still make it to the finals. Absolutely. So, I mean, Parallax, as of this time, still favourites to come towards the land finals, I guess. I mean, we saw yesterday how dominating they absolutely were. So, mm. Parallax definitely looking like a scary prospect and a few more teams looking very interesting throughout this season. But for now, we'll have to say goodbye because that's the end of week number two here in the AUNNZ Championships. We will, of course, see you guys next week when you can tune in at 7 p.m. on Tuesday night. Until then, though, have a very good night. All right, thumbs up, listen up. There's money to be made, and you're made to make the money. And I'm here to help you, to help your thumb help you get $50. All you have to do is sign up for a complete freedom account with St. George. That simple it is. Now, move, tap, up, down, soldiers. Do you want $50? Yes, ma'am, we do, ma'am! What a bunch of indexes. Open a complete freedom account today.